and welcome back to This American Ride Podcast, where we talk about issues that affect you, the average American. What's up, and welcome back to the show, and welcome to the final podcast of 2023. Yeah, Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year. Made it through Christmas, man. How was your Christmas? Christmas was good. Yeah? Christmas was good. Relaxed, for the most part. Mm. Um chilling with some no family. complaints kids are home got to spend time with them and uh hit both families up christmas eve christmas day it was good no that's good that's no good. complaints we uh hosted christmas eve um had my cousin down first time on christmas eve getting him uh involved with some family he has a uh, both his parents passed away kind of early age so he's always like he's my holiday loner you know yeah. So it was nice to have him um, down for Christmas Eve and here for Christmas morning. Um, had the neighbors over for Christmas Eve, cook some short ribs. Wasn't the plan, but as the guest list started to enlarge, I needed to make sure I could cook something simple. And uh, we went to church on Christmas Eve. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah good times. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was it was good. It was uh, first time I got my that my mom was able to go to Christmas Eve to a Christmas Eve service in probably four or five years oh nice so that's cool she was uh yeah she was happy about what did she think did she enjoy it or she she liked it she was uh she was a little frightened when we rolled her in and she was like this looks like a tv set (laughs) (laughs) yeah you know our church takes takes advantage of the Mm. modern technologies and all that stuff with the the music and the lighting and all that stuff yeah it was you know it was it was good though and it was um it was it was good to hear uh, the pastor talk about like why you know a celebration on uh, on Christmas Eve service should be should be big, right? You know, and I, yeah. I think a lot of you know we are celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, and I think a lot of people might look at something like that and be like, "Well, this service is kind of over the top," but at the end of the day, it it is over the top. Yeah, you what, know? what it's what we're celebrating is kind of over the top too. You know, yeah, so, so it deserves. A big celebration so it was kind of a, it was a neat way of looking at that yeah you know different different type of perspective so and here we are end of the first season of this american ride yeah man yeah wrapping it up yeah it's fun first season's been fun i don't for, know have uh, we, i don't know were we renewed for season two or <laughs> how's that work well it's a self-renewal process so um mm. uh my, my my prediction for 2024 is uh yes we will be renewed all right Ma- magic eight ball says you know probability high i have not got my <laughs> contract offer yet we'll see how it goes so and speaking of predictions that we're talking about today that's what we're talking um, about um what uh what we think 2024 is going to look like um not only you know domestically i feel like but on an international stage which i i guess the way the world is so interconnected today those things are kind of one and the same yeah um i originally when i planned out this podcast i wanted it to be a them to be kind of two separate things but i think the more and more and more i thought about it the more you know, we are going to be heavily affected by what goes on in the world. Oh yeah. Def- yeah, absolutely. So, um, probably not in a good way, but yeah, yeah, probably not in a good way. It's uh where'd you want to start? Tell me you got notes over there. <laughs> I did take some notes. Um, and I thought a, a good place to start this whole thing, um, would be with, uh, the man who predicts, uh, predicts the most futures and that would be most nostradamus okay um and uh what's he got to say so the first thing is you know was he right for 2023 Mm, (laughs) i mean everything's kind of uh metaphorical right you know everything that he does when when he was predicting you know what years would be and you know there's a lot of stuff that you know, has come true or people kind of stretch, I feel like to make sure they kind of come through. And, um, for 23, he said, so high will the bushel of wheat rise that man will be eating his fellow man. So, I mean, you kind of, you kind of, you know, got, got the inflation thing. What is right? that supposed to mean? <laughs> it's the bushel of wheat is the cost of the bushel of wheat is going up. 
Okay. And uh, the cost of the bushel of wheat. Well, I didn't eat any people this year. <laughs> Not yet. It's still time. <laughs> There's still time, but <laughs> wasn't on the agenda. There's still time. Um, so yeah, many countries had mind boggling inflations and uh, other predictions that he had for 23 uh, included a great war and worsening climate crisis and growing civil unrest. And they were the, the Nostradamus. Yeah. So I know a lot of his stuff is pretty vague, Yeah, but um, he wasn't wrong. No, I mean, I guess <laughs> if you keep it vague enough. You're probably not going to be wrong. <laughs> I should start doing that. I got a lot to learn from that guy. The Tony Romo of predictions over there. Oh my God. Hey, maybe, maybe Tony, maybe Tony Romo is Nostradamus. He, he, you know, what you read just sounded like something he would call in a game. <laughs> Throw out about 10 possibilities. And one of them happened and all of a sudden he's a genius. Uh, I love, I love the tone. I, I can't like I, the fact that I am subjected to uh, listening to Tony Romo, uh, you know, broadcast games just pains me to no end. It really, yeah. it really does. And yeah. maybe, maybe that's where, um, you know, we, we could segue into uh, I was gonna a- say prediction. AI is AI. Oh, well, I was going to say, uh, where are we I at? Mean, you took us, we took us to Tony Romo. I was going <laughs> to say, first, easy. We'll start off really easy. Oh, yes. All right. NFL predictions since the Super Bowl is in 2024. Uh, who is winning the Super Bowl in 2024? Man, oh, man. Um, An unbiased look at this. Un, 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 unbiased look at this. Um, a few weeks ago, you, you would have probably liked my answer worse because maybe two weeks ago, I might've said the Baltimore Ravens. Okay. But right now I think it is probably going to be the 49ers to win it all, to win it all. Okay. I don't see it, It's hard for teams to beat teams twice in a season. Yeah, in, for sure. In, in this in this NFL, in today's NFL, especially a good team twice. Especially a good team twice, and Baltimore just beat San Francisco. Now, I'm figuring that you know Baltimore and San Francisco are probably going to be in the Super Bowl. I think there is a good chance of that. I, I know it's so tough. Um, this is one of the, the toughest years I I can remember, which is yeah. how kind of balanced it is. There's no one really sticking out to me as like a clear gonna get it cut favorite to win it all yeah i mean i think most people are thinking in the afc it's baltimore as a baltimore hater um Tough I, I, I have to admit they're they're a very good very solid very balanced team um until he does it i don't believe that lamar jackson is a championship quarterback i feel like he chokes in a lot of big games i feel like when you get into the playoffs, teams figure out how to stop their run, Mm -hmm. stop him running. And when it comes to him having to pass the ball, he's inadequate. In my opinion, I think his, I think his statistics even show that this year personally, but, um, but I mean, they're a really good team. And if the defense can play, you know, the way it played against the Niners, they're going to be hard to beat. They're going to be a tough Um, out. They're going to be a really tough out considering they're going to be home most likely. Yeah. The, you know, as long as they're in it, you know, that makes it that that, that makes it harder for everybody else. Um, yeah, they're going to be a really tough out. But um, I just until he proves he can do it in the big games that matter. I'm just not believing it. But and that's also I mean, that's a that's a, a biased perspective as well, too, because there's it's physically impossible for me to not be biased when it comes to talking about the Ravens. So uh, that's my best effort to not be biased. Uh, I uh, certainly think um, if you if you throw in the, the top handful of teams that have a solid shot of winning the Super Bowl, they're definitely in, in the conversation. Yeah, they, but like they, you said, I think be. beating San Fran again, which you know that's if San Fran even gets there. But I feel like you know their quarterback had a really bad game, and you know I don't know that he'll do that again. They have so many weapons uh, to account for. But, I mean, Baltimore did do it the other night, so who knows? I don't know. And then there's other teams that just aren't, you know, there's D- Detroit not getting enough. I mean, they're right there. Detroit not getting enough respect, and I'm, and I'm guilty of that too. I mean, But, here, I mean, it's it's earned. Like, they, it, they've not been consistent enough for anybody to really, like, believe them. Yeah, but they, they did just, and I guess the flip side with Detroit is 
they're kind of, uh, you know, that NFC North division is uh, not as stout as it has been in years past. No, no, it's you it, know? it's definitely weaker this year, but I mean, they've they've won consistently across the board, though, not yeah. just in, in their comp, in their division. So, you know, and you still have you know defending champs who look like crap right now, but they still you know have some players. Kansas City, you know, you got Buffalo coming on strong. You got Miami, who's offensively been dominant all year. I don't think Kansas City um, makes the uh, AFC Championship game. I hope you're right. I'm sick of seeing them. But I mean, they, they haven't proven to me that they can string together enough wins to to, to make a yeah. playoff run. I mean, it looks like. It, I mean, best case scenario for them. I mean, they're going to have to do it on the road because they're not going to have that home field advantage that they've had mm-hmm. some of the past seasons recently. Um, so, and of course, like you said, you still got the Eagles over there. You got Detroit Eagles and, uh, San Fran all with really good records. Um, I don't even know like who I'm trying to think of who the wild cards are in the NFC. You got like Tampa, if they win their division, who's playing really good right now. T- Tampa is hot, but again, is he, is he a championship quarterback? It's so I tough. Don't know. Who do you think? Where are you I at? Don't know. Um, if I had to hypothetical gun to my head right now, I'd say San Fran. I would, but um, I I could see it going a million different ways. It's only going to take a player or two. Listen, they're going to be home. They're on the West Coast. It's a tough place to go play. Um, it's I mean, it's not Arrowhead when Kansas City's on on point or anything like that. Right. But it's um, it, it's for these teams that they're going to be competing against. I mean, who is who is going to be who is going to be, you know, possibly playing them in the playoffs? I mean, may, maybe the Eagles. If the Eagles can put together, you know, a quality, probably two quality games. If the Eagles see them, it'll be in the NFC Championship game. If to play, you know what I mean? As the bracket would sit, I feel if they would see them, it, it would be the NFC Championship game. So the 49ers are gonna get, I mean, they might get the they might get the Bucks. Yeah, it's gonna be you know, those. it's gonna be interesting who the 49ers are gonna get and where Dallas goes. Yeah. Because Dallas is not gonna beat the 49ers. Dallas in, be a wild card in San Fran. They're 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 not capable. Well, I mean, I they're not know. capable of doing it. What? There's two games left. Are they within two games of the Eagles? Dallas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, that that division is still up for grabs. It is. Um, that Tampa division is still the 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 South is still up for grabs. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but Dallas is two tougher North games. Is not. The Eagles have two easier games. They've got the Cardinals and they've got the Giants. Cardinals in Philly. Giants on the road. Can they win well, both of those? You got the Giants again after just yeah. having them, huh? Yeah, schedule's kind of screwed up that way. Uh, I hate it when schedules wind up that way because I feel like you always have a chance to hit a team hot and hit a team cold. And when games are like two and three weeks apart, I feel, or three and four weeks apart, I feel like you're either going to get the hot team or you're going to get the cold team. I feel like the turnaround in the NFL usually isn't that. Um, so it's always dangerous. Like, you know, we got a pretty decent Giants team right now. Um, mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I'd roll with San Fran. I don't want to. I don't want to bore all the non-sports fans. The to non-sports death, but, people, um, considering that's coming up very early in the twenty. It is twenty-four year. I figured we'd we'd go ahead and make that prediction. What else you got? That's uh sports. I mean, that's that's it. I mean, I think uh, you know twenty twenty-four Phillies, man. Phillies national, uh, you know, champs. It's their year. Mm, I thought last year was their year. It was, but they're gonna they're gonna get it this year. They're putting they're putting a very close the same team on the. You know, know, on the docket, they just went man. Out and signed like seven bazillion dollars worth of two, <laughs> two players. Was that the Dodgers? It was the Dodgers. Mm, I don't follow baseball <laughs> like that. Um, couldn't, yep. even give, couldn't even give you a prediction, but I will predict that the Phillies, the Phillies won't win the, the World Series. The World Series. Nah, I'm going with Philly. Shocking. Going, going with Philly. Yeah. I don't even know. You talk about basketball. I don't even know. Yeah. Couldn't even tell you who's a good team. Won't be the it won't be uh, the Detroit Pistons. That's for sure. They are setting history right now. I think twenty nine game losing streak. No, really? Yeah, it's pretty oh, bad. Wow. So, safe bet yeah. you can chalk them off the list. I don't think if they went out, they're making it. Listen, as long as it's not uh, <laughs> LeBron winning it, then I'm fine with whatever happens there. Hockey, it's not looking great for my Penguins. They're 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 pretty average, but you never know. They got some good players, so they can get hot. I don't even know how your flyers are. Meh. I haven't, I haven't really followed. I yeah, usually don't really pick up. I don't usually pick up with like really paying attention to hockey until football season's over. 
Yeah, yeah, because yeah, then right. you're into like the second sure, half right. of the hockey season. You get into where you start to make a playoff push once football starts. So I don't, I can't even pay attention to it until the football ends. So we'll see. But Keith Jones used to live down the street from me. Yeah, Flyers announcer Keith Jones. He um, he used to live down the street. Now he's the, I think he's the head of operations. So he moved to Florida, and then I think he moved back. We got uh, so sports. Nostradamus. Let's go with Nostradamus 24. He has sports? No, no, he doesn't. He doesn't do sports. Uh, well, one last sports thing. Oh. You got you got an Olympics this year. Oh, God. It's a Summer Olympics. Summer Olympics. We clean house. You think we clean house? We're going to do good. We always do good in the Summer Olympics. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I hope we have a Summer Olympics. I mean. Honestly. It was, there's a chance it was easier to be excited about the Olympics back when, you know, in the days when the people playing for the U.S. team actually liked the U.S. Well, that's another thing. They, they, they've they've kind of destroyed it with all their bull crap. It is. We'll see how all they their go. politics, there. all we'll their see. social issues that they got to bring into it. We'll see how they go this year. We'll see um, how they go. We need a little, we need a little positive leadership from those folks. So yeah, good luck. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I do, I do enjoy, oh, I do enjoy watching a lot of the different, uh, summer olympic you know events yeah i mean um, we should we should take gold we should take gold in gymnastics this year for sure i know we've got I mean, a, like how do you know that just because you follow what well, you, you get like gymnastics we get the i get the news alerts the from the news for uh, gymnastics and they tell you like when they when they win and do well that national news stuff yeah mm, i follow yeah. it all mm -hmm. so I, mean, I assume we'll have you know competitors in track and field we always so, do you know, we like we have fast people. And I don't know what the swimming looks like um, this year. No I mean, clue about after. swimming. Phelps, Phelps was a human. Sw mutant. Swimming used to be one of our one of our ringer sports mm -hmm. where we just rack up gold, but I don't I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. I don't know how we're we'll going to do start this following, year. you know, when we get a little closer and start hearing some of the maybe the, you know the, the popular stories, but I, I have no idea. Yeah. I really don't. So Nostradamus. Nostradamus. 2024 predictions? 2024. He predicts mm. there will be a climate disaster that will lead to a great famine. Hmm. So who's, who's this again? Al Gore? <laughs> oh, Nostradamus. My Nostradamus. Um, he also predicts that there will be a great naval battle with a red adversary. Huh. And this was before, you know. I mean, he's obviously he's not around right now. So, And for 2024, he... Uh, he predicts there will be a shakeup in the royal family. Um, so, is it possible that uh, Prince William could take the throne, King William? I don't even know how to respond to that. <laughs> I could, Neither one of us are big royals. I, I can care like we're not, less. we're not into like the whole royal family thing. But here's my uh, 1776. <laughs> That's when we stopped caring. Um, yeah, I don't know. So um, it doesn't even matter. To the to the country of England, I mean, it do, it does matter. That's the thing that with people over there, it does matter. It's still like a. Does thing it for matter globally? Absolutely not. Like no impact globally. I mean, whatever charity they give, you know, you I mean, know. that's it. But absolutely not. And, and they're, I mean, again, like yeah, I know, like they're traditionalists. They're they're patriots. I'm sure it's like still, you know, a big deal. That is them. that is their patriotism though. Right. That, that is. But like, they're doing the same thing as us, where they're just flooding in all these foreigners mm -hmm. into their country, to where they're losing their. That yeah. sense of national pride as well. Yeah. You know, as a yeah. whole, just as a whole, I'm just, yeah, there's still like people like us here, there, you know, who care, but um, yeah, we're watering it down, you know, to where you just water down and all these traditions like just get kind of kicked to the wayside. Kind of, kind of muddled up. Yeah. But that is their nationalism. I mean, the royal family is their nationalism. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, so I can't, I can't knock it. It's just, it's, it's not mine. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. sure. Uh, what else? And he predicts there will be a new Pope this year, mm. which, um, yeah, I'm not Catholic. So I really don't follow so, the Pope stuff very much. The Pope. So what, what does the Pope do? Um, he decides the position of that the church takes on issues. Mm. All right. So how's that um, been working out lately? They've been getting more and more liberal over the years. I think. Um, he is also the head of the Holy See, which is the Catholic Church's central government, which is another thing. And people say that, um, 
that he is the closest to God, which if you look at actual Catholicism and you look at Christianity, um, that is a fallacy. And the Catholic Church does not claim that because the teachings of the Catholic Church teach you that anybody can be close to God. You don't have to be. It's not because of your position. So that has always been a the baseline of the teaching of the Catholic Church. Most people probably don't know that, but new pope. It's an amazing thing when they when they elect a new pope. They do this uh this whole like these bishops and they all go in and vote and then they have this like fire that they light and you see the smoke and it's when the ballots are in and they've finally got one. It's it's it's, it's an old tradition that's probably been that way since they've been electing popes and they just kept it the same way, you know. It's pretty pretty cool that they do that. All I can think of when you say that is the <laughs> The movie, I think it was Euro Trip. Did you see that? Of course not. Probably. I don't know. Euro Trip. It was like one of those slapstick comedy teenage this teenage, you know, group of kids go on a Euro trip after like high school and they're over there. And I think they were like in Rome when they were like voting on a whole bunch of crap happened in the movie that's completely unrelated. But they end up in Rome, like at that building when they're like voting on the next Pope. And um, somehow they're in the building and there's a bunch of stupid stuff goes on, but someone accidentally like lights the fire or something that, and all these the hundreds of thousands of people are outside of the, of the, um, they all come into the square. The building. Back in, yeah. yeah and, then they, and then the one person, like the one girl, like she somehow gets like wrapped up in like a freaking uh, um, curtains, these fancy curtains that are like, <laughs> and she stumbles out onto the balcony. <laughs> <laughs> and like i think it was actually the dude and he and he some i don't know somehow he had like the hat on and everybody thought he was the new pope. they all started cheer it's a stupid comedy but if you've seen euro trip it was pretty funny oh they lit, they lit the smoke or something like that everybody yeah well, as soon there. as they light the smoke that's when everybody comes into yeah. the you know square even though they feel like they camp in that square for days when they're doing that stuff yeah interesting yeah. i don't know i mean well catholic link thing doesn't really I'm Catholic, so it just doesn't like you know. It's hard for me to like care. <laughs> I, uh, I say I'm Catholic by default, kind of right. not my fault, you know. But it's um, you know, my grandmother was a devout Catholic, and obviously, you always had your you know Palm Sunday. She always had her palms like in the cross, like that would hang in the kitchen. And uh, another thing she always has was that they used to have these uh, calendars with the Pope on it. So like all these Pope shots every month. He had a new picture of the Pope. That's weird. And uh, yeah. <laughs> so That's it, weird. Was he in a bikini? So, no, no. He was in his, his, his Pope garb, you know. Um, but she had that hanging. And then she had a picture of, you know, Pope John Paul II, who was the Pope. Is there like, you know, from certain 78 months where to, he was like posing with the choir boys? Or anything like that? <laughs> Damn. Just <laughs> curious how that works. <laughs> So we, it was always whenever you opened up the pantry, there was always a it was like a shrine to Pope John Paul II because in the pantry that huh? was that was his that's just where that's it was. where he got it stuck was, in it the was pantry small city apartment man it wasn't like you know but yeah that's where the, that's where the Pope was the Pope was always in the pantry <laughs> that's funny <laughs> yeah man so that's what that's what he predicts that was, that's what he predicts I mean I don't know uh, how Nostradamus figures out the Pope thing maybe he's got all his predictions laid out and he goes. I haven't had a new pope in a while. We'll put a new pope here. <laughs> so who's no, who is Nostradamus? I mean, he's the guy who predicted all this stuff. I don't know who Nostradamus he's just a, he's was. He's just a guy. You know, I don't know. He's a philosopher. I do I have to look? I'm going to have to look up like who was Nostradamus. So he's so this person. Then it's been the Nostradamus thing's been going on forever. So this person's not alive. No, 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 no. So he, he made died. all he, these predictions way in advance. Well, that's the whole thing. He died in 1566. And he, he was a French. And he predicted all the way out to 2024. Yeah, I think he predicted way, way out. Um, this guy uh, spent a lot of time on this. Just, listen, he was smarter than us because we thought we'd be flying in little fucking spacecraft like the Jetsons when we were in 2024. I mean, well, I mean, you got little tar boxes rolling down the street and they're. <laughs> And their Tesla, you know, <laughs> sleeping while it drives. So we're not that far. We're not that far. But uh, uh, Nostradamus was a French astrologer, apothecary, physician, and reputed seer who was best known for his book, Les Prophetesses. Am I even going to From the that 1500s. Word? From the 1500s. Yeah. So he was yeah. predicting stuff that was going to happen five. Yeah. Yeah, like that. Wow. 
Wow. Yeah. That's what I'm, I, when you figure that, he's not that off. I feel like he's I mean, throwing darts. <laughs> he's not that I off. Had years where he's horribly wrong, and other years <laughs> where like, oh look, genius. Yeah. I mean, even a bird clock is right exactly. twice a day, right? Interesting. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know who's the who's the naval battle with the with the red opponent. That's what I'm saying. Like, where's that stuff come from? I mean, that's his prediction, and that's um, you know, I don't, I don't, yeah, it's just. I crazy. mean, I can only think of one red adversary at the, at this moment. Well, Russia's kind of a red. I, I feel like <laughs> I feel like Russia's red, but I mean, we always associate I, that with China, yeah. you know. So I feel like both of those are red Mm. states um for standing russia doesn't have too much of a navy get into either get into it with either of them it's not just going to be a naval battle no it is not no no it is not but we do have a naval battle going on right now in the red sea and that is not with a red opponent that is with uh that's with iran and and just mix that up it's the red sea Mm -hmm. he's kind of got that so so i'm saying you get vague enough man all this stuff is spot on yeah Spot on. <laughs> yeah, no Nailed it. In the Red Sea. Nailed, oh. Nailed it. Oh. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so home front. What do we? What do we think the home front's going to look like? Mm. I mean, we're all. Everybody's been screaming recession, screaming recession, screaming recession. I, I think that's still going to get worse. Yeah. Yeah, I think the economy, especially in the early part of twenty or twenty four, I think it's going to get a lot worse. Um, and I was just reading some other stuff that kind of said that same thing. Um, with it like picking up and and getting be- better towards the end of twenty four, but you know, if that's the case, why, why, why would it be better at the end of the year? Maybe some political going on. Well, obviously, all things get a little bit better at the uh, come election year. So I think we're in a mm. we're in a funny spot right now because. We're in a tough spot with interest rates. Unemployment's kind of starting to creep up there. Inflation, although not what it was eight or nine months ago, is still not what it needs to be for the average family. Yeah, um, I'm close. And, uh, you know, the fact that it's an election year and we've got all this stuff kind of going on definitely uh, throws a monkey wrench into the government's plans, I'm sure, because they need it to improve because right now they are the sitting, you know, the, the sitting party is uh, in a shit storm of shitty ratings and broke people. And, you know, you can yeah. take all the ideals you want, man. If people aren't broke, man, they could, they can vote a lot of different ways, but I feel like when people are broke, man, it just, there is no standard or, you know, personal ideal or anything that, uh, that trumps the money tree in people's bank accounts in this country. You know, he said trumps it. <laughs> 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 That's yeah, know. I mean, I think if people are broke, they can throw a lot of their values out the window to to not be broke. When it comes to voting yeah, man. The election, getting the wallet is the most personal. It's personal, you know, it's affecting the it, family. It affects, it's personal. It affects everything. It affects your way of life, mm-hmm. your freedom, your ability to provide you know, ability for people you provide. love. Yeah, ability to live the way you want to live. So it gets crazy, and it's not great right now. I am hopeful we will have a soft landing to this mess that we're in. I, I think, think that's going to happen in 24. I think I, I think maybe we will see this soft landing in 24. I think a lot of it is going to boil down to where the Fed sits with this first interest rate decision of the year mm-hmm. and to see like where they where they're at and where they're you know if they if they hike rates in this I read it, something in that, this first quarter they're done I, I mean it's done I read it but I read something that predicted that the next there was going to be like three um three decreases like with the Fed it was going to decrease over the next three like three times it would get a little bit lower each time and I, f- I forget what the numbers were um but that was the prediction that it wasn't going to go up that it was going to go down right but I don't know what that was based so, on. It's uh, I've, I've read I read the Fed release that they were going to cut interest rates. Um, I, I, I saw that headline too. Um, and but the, the I don't think the amounts were announced, like how much they were going to cut. No, it wasn't an so, amount. It just it said something to the effect that the next three like meetings, I guess, re- releases of that or whatever were going to be cuts. They would all be cuts. Um, and it did get. I, 
from what I remember reading, it did kind of give numbers, but I didn't remember those. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember what they're. And, and you know what? I mean, honestly, they, they can't really do that. They don't know what it's going to be come Q2, come Q3. They don't know what the situation is yeah, going to be. No idea. I mean, we could turn around, you know, and inflation could be through the roof here in, in Q2 again. I mean, who knows? If inflation goes back up, they're not going to cut rates. And if they do, they'll let you know how things are really working. Because if they cut rates in the face of increasing if inflation, that is just a struggle to keep power. Yeah. Look, all I know is everything I buy on the regular, things I've been buying regularly for the last 10 years, um, are drastically up. Way up. Drastically up, man. Everything that like are normal things for me to buy, whether it's from food or fun <laughs> stuff, whatever, like... We just were at at the at the local. I was just thinking about that bar um, restaurant here, you know, having lunch, and um, man, I, I've been going to local bars and restaurants for a long time, and uh, the kind of craft beers that we like to drink, you know, I've typically sat at like six fifty, seven, seven fifty, eight bucks for a pint, and they're now they're now at the point where they're ten, eleven, twelve dollars for a pint of like a craft beer it's nuts it's, man and even like that like i told you that sam adams cold snap was like 758 bucks like get out of here yeah. with these prices i, I man. paid what like 850 for you know and i said listen i remember remember when going to the bar years ago it was always cheaper to drink domestic than it was to drink imports yeah remember that yeah what yeah. the hell is what what the hell that, well that, craft beer happened yeah. and they don't have a category for that it's so, not a, it's not considered a domestic or an import it's a craft beer. It's crazy. I ordered a local beer that was three bucks more than a Stella Artois. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which technically is owned by a you know, US company, technically, but I mean still. Well, I ordered hell, a beer. Man. I ordered a beer from a local brewery mm -hmm. that I literally could have went down to a mile down the road to that brewery and got it for two dollars less. Two, almost two, yeah, at least two dollars less. Oh, that's right, farm truck. Yeah, yeah. like mm -hmm. it's a pretty significant markup. I don't know. I just feel like ten dollars for a pint of beer. I don't care where it's made or what brewery it's from is a lot. It's got to stop. And it's that's not even in the highest. There was they had a couple on there that were like twelve, and I'm like, yeah, holy crap, man! You still had three beers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know. But so then you just look at, I mean, then you can, you know, should I even drink out, like go, go drink, you know, go get, bring it home and, you know, get package goods, take it home. But the, the craft beer four packs are 20 bucks getting and that 20 bucks is now what I used to consider astronomical. And now that's getting more normal and it's higher twenties and you can get, mm -hmm. them, you know, almost pushing $30 for some of them. It's, it's just crazy, you know, and, you know, obviously where's that coming from? It's well, it's coming from the cost of all the product that it requires for them to make it that all goes up the government you know that causes all that stuff to go up the the business has to pay for that to make it and who they pass it on to for forever forever that's who gets it the the consumer is the one that ends up paying these the these wages costs. the wages of these people mm -hmm. minimum wage mandates mm -hmm. all that causes goods to go up and it's just uh, uh never never a good thing so yeah, inflation. I, I think we have a soft landing. I mean, I'm I'm praying. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful we have some kind of a soft landing. Um, they need to make it easier to uh, for people and businesses to borrow money again. Um, I think things are unfortunately things are expensive, and I think we know from life experience that once prices go up, they they very rarely come down. Mm, facts, you know. So. It, this is going to be this is going to be our new normal um, until people stop doing until people stop doing stuff. I mean, it's going to be expensive to go out to eat until people stop going out to eat. And and that's, you know, you know, we, we said early on this podcast yeah. when we started it, you know, things start one person at a time. Things start locally, you know, movements grow until people stop. It's like gas. When gas gets expensive, people stop driving. The demand goes down. People gas comes down. Yeah. Um, it's, it, it is what it is. As long as people are going out and drinking and people are going out and, and eating, it's, um, I mean, I, I feel bad for the small businesses, but I mean, life is what it is. If you have to make a budget cut, it is not going to be 
you know, well, for, for the average, for most people, it's not going to be, you know, not paying your bills or going out to eat, like going out to eat should be getting whacked immediately if you're trying to balance a budget. Right. Yeah. So I still don't get it. I mean, we're still having the issue with like work worker shortages, you know, like people aren't working and I don't get it. Like, how are you not working? You know, everywhere you go, oh, we're, we're short staffed, we're short staffed. <clears throat> and they're saying that's going to be a big problem moving forward in, in 24. But like, I, I just don't understand like how people aren't working. I know, you know, coming off of the whole COVID thing and people were, you know, not working, they were, you know, getting some help and some government money. A lot of people were using credit card, but they were saying that was another thing I read that, you know, those, all those people that were doing that are like reaching the end of, you know, their limit on credit. Yeah. You know, so it's going to be a, it's going to be a real quick uh, kind of wake up call here coming real soon as those people are kind of like reach the limit of all their credit and, and they're going to have to start like making some money, you know, because you can't just live on credit in the government forever. Well, and recessions and I don't care what you say, we've been in a recession now and this is why I think we're going to have a, a soft 24 landing. Statistically, we have been in a recession for like over a year and a half. Yeah. You know, statistically, our GDP has been down. Inflation has been up. We have been in whether the Biden administration changed what their definition of a recession is mm. to have him not be a recession president. But guess what? 80 percent, maybe 85 percent of his first term, we have been in a recession. Yeah. And it's it's going to be remember. I mean, obviously, you know, you don't really know what these presidents are until historians kind of take a look back and see you know, what the impact of their presidency made on the next generation or in, in 10 or 20 years, like what the impact of that presidency is, because there is impact of every presidency down the line. And, and this has been, it's, it's been a, it's been a poor showing for the Democrat. It's, it's been, it's been a poor showing. We've been in a recession. They've changed the rules. Now, if we were in, if Trump got reelected and we had these problems, you damn well know that Schumer would be standing on the top of the hill you know, mm -hmm. with Nancy's false teeth clattering in her mouth saying this is a recession, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, facts. And, and that is, it, it is what well, it I mean, is. They always but, change the rules. Right. So now we're going to, we're going to change the rules. We've been in a recession. That's kind of why I think we've been in it long enough that we should have some kind of a soft landing without going into a depression, even though we know now that from a cost of living standpoint, the average American is living worse than the average American. And this is a whole other topic that we can cover. The average American today is living more paycheck to paycheck than the average American in the depression did. Mm. And that just like people have got to shake their head at that. But statistically we make less compared to what things cost. Right. We make more, right. but we make less compared to what things cost. Yeah. I mean, the price of a car, the percentage of income that the prices of new cars are to people's income today is three and four times of what the percentage of income to the price of a new car was oh, yeah. in the 1920s. Absolutely. The price of a home is exponentially more in a monthly income standpoint than the price of a home was oh, yeah. in the 20s. So we are living in theory, you know, more poor than the average American was in um in 24. And, and, I, and I think when it comes to things like times like this, if you're not conservative with your spending habits and you are frivolous and living beyond your needs, those people who live beyond their, their means are the people who are smacked the hardest when the economy mm -hmm. gets tough. You know, it's all good. Yeah, when, no doubt. You know, it's all good when the money's flowing and things are cheap and, you know, you've got your low interest credit card rates and you're, you mm -hmm. know, you've got a job, but the minute you might lose a job, maybe not be able to replace that job and then, you yeah. know, have all this debt on top of it, you got to be smart. Yeah. And speaking of losing jobs, I think, I think a lot of people are going to lose jobs in 24. Yeah. Um, and I think a big, a big reason for that is this whole surge in AI. Ooh, I see what you did there. Yeah. Well, Se I segued for you. <laughs> you did good too. That was good. That was a good one. <laughs> yeah, I think so, man. And, and, and that's the big concern, you know, the more we, you know, use AI to, to do things and, and do people's jobs, mm -hmm. you know, well, obviously they don't have to pay AI what they're paying a person. Right. So I feel like somebody has to be paid somewhere. 
Yeah. And I mean, I think the like, people, I think the, the people at the top are going to, you know, still be there making decisions. Mm-hmm. But um, I mean, the lower tier people that they can have, uh, you know, technology do their job, they're not going to keep them around. No. I mean, no. you see it on, on like, you know, not AI, but, you know, self checkout. You see it at, you know, stores, you know, like, well, self checkout was a thing. We just talked about minimum wage and like the state we live in. The minute, let me tell you, they did not waste, they wasted zero time in the fact that as soon as New Jersey mandated the uh, minimum wage hike and the, the benchmarks that went, that went around like over how long they would have to be to get to like 1580 or whatever an hour for minimum wage, mind you, more than I made as a nurse when I came out mm-hmm. of nursing school. Yeah. Um, Supermarkets went to self checkout. Now we've got six registers that one person is now running. Wawa went to self checkout, and yeah. now you've got one person sitting there, you know, on one register, and you've got four or five self checkouts. And people are like, "Well, I just won't support it." Well, then, then don't go to Home Depot, mm. right? Don't go to Home Depot because Home Depot sometimes has no registers. Yeah, open. and and yeah, for real, and it's it's the prime reason I don't go there. But it's like then wait in line for one cashier to check out these 10 other people who don't want to use the automated checkout. You know, I mean, that's that's kind of that it's they're, they're going to force you to support it in a state like this. Anyway. Did you go to the um, self checkout employee uh, Christmas party this year? No, no, you didn't go to that. No, no, I didn't. You didn't say, did not. you see that post? There was a meme going. That was a popular meme, <laughs> and someone had like took a picture of like I don't know if they're outside Walmart or some one of the big box stores, and they said that they were there for the uh, the annual um, self checkout employee Christmas party. <laughs> I was cracking up. That was funny. I still want my uh, self checkout training, man. I didn't get that. I yeah, mean, you well, know, it's uh, can't blame me for stealing stuff. I don't know. Nobody trained me how to do this. <laughs> I'll tell you, <laughs> shoot. Uh, I can't wait till I get old, so I can shoplift without consequence. <laughs> I had a buddy I used to work with. He used to always talk about going to uh, Lowe's or Home Depot, and every time he went, he made sure that like he, he got some. He snuck out of there with <laughs> he got something. something that was left in the bottom of the cart. <laughs> God, man, <laughs> crazy. But yeah, I think I think uh, this AI thing is gonna. I mean, it started like becoming a big topic here in 2023 it's why the hollywood one of the reasons hollywood writers were striking and yeah. personalities were striking but mm-hmm. i think it i think it is a real push in 24 and we start seeing a lot of a lot of problems from it a, a lot of problems arising yeah due to it i know i was reading something about um corporate attorneys having their hands full here in 2024 because there's going to be a lot of lawsuits a lot of different things arising from this that, that we just aren't prepared for I mean, that being said, we, we just talked about Tony Romo, you know, a little bit before. I wouldn't mind seeing a, a Tony Romo replaced by Lil Ayat. I, I think it would be, it'd be probably more, wouldn't be hard to make that more exciting. Mm. <laughs> Look yeah. at you. You're so torn because you hate just, Tony, but you're so torn. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's tough, man. Tough l- listening to NFL. They got some bad broadcasters, but I don't know. I just feel like we're in for we're in for a lot of unintended consequences with this uh, AI stuff that you know, people get so excited about technology, man. So, but so often technology is just not a positive. Yeah. And it's, you know, I, I think it, it's so tough because because all change is consequence. Right. I mean, yeah, it, it is what it is. I think all technology has, whether it's the computer or whether it's, you know, the smartphone. I mean, I think everything that we have has has some kind of consequence um, in in one way or another. Whether it's the, the like the automated checkout, you know, but uh, which could argue was the barcode, <laughs> the invention of the barcode. Yeah. You know, the the negative change of the invention of the barcode and scanning was the self checkout, and that's something that you could you say you never saw that, didn't see that coming, you know. It's like, why has everything yeah. got a barcode on it? Oh, for inventory tracking. Oh, really? Oh, for self checkout. I got to do a scan now. You know, so it's uh, unintended consequence of the invention of the barcode is this self checkout thing. So, have you ever watched a movie though about robots or AI where Terminator, where it wasn't like 
a bad situation for the, for the humans. <laughs> it's always a shitty situation. Like, have, has it ever been a good thing other than the Jetsons? <laughs> like, uh, you know you what know. I mean? Yeah. Like, it's just the Will Smith. What is it? Uh, what was that? Uh, Will Smith one that he did with the robots. Wasn't that Will Smith? I Robot. I Robot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that, you're impressed that I knew that. That huh? wasn't good. I didn't see that it. That was a terrible scenario. I didn't see it, but I know the name. No. I feel like humans are hell bent on making themselves obsolete. Like everything they do is just like killing, killing jobs for humans, uh, making life worse for humans. You got liberals talking about now how, how, uh, you know, the, the just humans breathing is bad for the environment. So I guess their next step is wanting to just like start offing people for the environment and for the planet. Like, I, I just don't, I don't get it. It's a constant just attack on humanity and it's an interesting argument because the liberal argument like climate change for example right there uh, we're gonna get a, we're creating jobs in the climate sector well that's that's great if you look at that side of the headline you're you're creating jobs in the climate sector <laughs> what about all these other people over here who have been in the you know the fossil fuel energy sector mm-hmm. you know, f those people Basically. Like, not only are we you know not only will you not get these client sector jobs right you're, yeah. you, these climate sector jobs, you, you know, you're, you're going to be out of a job with, you know, the skill that you have is been deemed done. So, so they're about to legalize propane, disposable propane tanks in this state. Illegalize disposable, who uses disposable protein? Tank? Well, do you know what a disposable okay. propane tank is? No. So a dispo- like, I and I, so. I I just had to look at this. A disposable propane tank, propane tank, is they're like the green Coleman tanks that you would okay. hook up to a stove, but they're also the blue tanks that you hook up to a torch. So you are not going to be able to. Uh, it'll be illegal to possess those in uh, in New Jersey. And to my understanding, they're going to make it illegal to ship them to New Jersey. Mm-hmm. They must be as deadly to the environment as grocery bags. Yes. Mm. Yeah. For, for those of you who do not know, plastic grocery bags are no longer a thing. No grocery bag is is, is a thing in New Jersey. Yeah. Unless there's no uh, grocery bag. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing. Bring your own or buy some. But they're making a whole lot more of those plastic grocery bags that you can buy. Yeah. You are can. they not some type of plastic? <laughs> they're totally plastic. Right. Which is ironic. We can't have the plastic bags. We can't have the little plastic bags, but they're making the fancy big plastic bags. They're essentially some sort of they're, fake they're, they're, material, yeah. man-made material, synthetic, I should say, synthetic yeah. crap, plastic. And they'll sell those to you for a dollar or 50 mm-hmm. cents or whatever, you know. But you basically, you know, you have to walk into the store with your grocery bags. And I still don't do it. I refuse to do it. Yeah, it's just... Is I it? just take them all, put them all back in the car, take it out of the car, dump it on. I'm just not like, <laughs> not walking into the grocery store with, with, with your with, bag, with bags. It's the dumbest uh, thing. And yet everything in the store is wrapped in plastic. Everything I put in that know, bag is plastic. Everything, every, every plastic. jug I put in that bag is plastic. Um, except when I go to Wegmans to buy milk. You know, it's like that. Yeah. What's Wegmans has uh, milk that they still sell in the glass bottles. And it is the most amazing milk ever. Oh boy, <laughs> it's bougie milk. <laughs> Forty-seven dollar gallon of milk. So well, I, yeah, so I, honestly, I think it's like six dollars a gallon. But you get <laughs> you get a dollar back when you bring back the glass jar to Wegmans. Oh my God, who's got time for that? I do that. You're killing me. <laughs> it's yeah. good milk, man. But it's hilarious. Like they they joke about you know how they banned plastic straws. Now they got paper straws wrapped in plastic like, you... new jersey they can have they they have plastic sense. straws but the you have to ask the wait staff for them the wait staff just can't volunteer for the, right. them to you otherwise they'll yeah, they did that at Wawa too. how about that new jersey tangent oh my gosh dude <laughs> f the state <laughs> it's brutal we it could have done a brutal. whole podcast named f this state just well, about we, new jersey we still can there's always time for that there's always time for that what else? What else? Oh, you know, what other man. predictions do you have for um for the new year? I, I think um well obviously there's the big big political situation coming up in twenty twenty four. We have a showdown. We're gonna see so, what these people in this country are made of. I mean, if uh you know 
we, we are going to see what this, what this country made of come November. And, and what, uh, what are your predictions? Uh, I, I'm not even like, I'm not even on the fence. It's got to be a Republican. I don't know who it's going to be. I assume it's going to be, it's going to be Trump. Um, I assume it's going to be Trump. I don't know. I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing or a bad thing, but it, he's, he's got this field. I don't, I don't he, know he, how he's got this field steam. Why would you say you don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing huh? how, before COVID was released onto us by the Chinese and probably some of our liberal government oh, yeah. people. Um, how, how was our economy? Country was great. Every single thing was booming. Everything was great. Country, that's not why I'm saying it's, it's I, I, I don't, I don't think it's going to be a bad thing economically for this country. I don't think it'll be a bad thing from, from a world stage from this country. I just think that these, these liberals are going to have a fucking meltdown. I'm gonna have to listen to it. And, oh. and although I'd rather listen to a meltdown from a liberal than, than have, you know, another four years Look, of a Democrat in office. They're going to do just, what they do. Right. Yeah. So you're going to have a whole bunch of them talking about how they're going to leave the country. They're not going to go anywhere. But they're still here, mind you. Yeah. So, uh, h- hilarious. They're still reading here. some of these. I've literally seen recently people who said if he wins, they will leave. And they said that in 2016. And they're saying and that they're again. still here. That's and, what I'm saying. The same, per- the same people, like some of the same people, you know, the shares and people like that. Like I'm leaving if it, and it's funny. Hunter Biden said that. <laughs> I'm sure you might want to leave because you might be in jail. <laughs> you, know, you, you might, know. you might need, you to might leave. need to leave before that <laughs> happens. But um, I think, um, I honestly think it's so hard to like kind of predict this because you never know what's going to happen 3 a.m. on election night. Because I don't feel like the Republicans have really done much to fix that problem after 2020. Um, but man, I I don't see how I think with every one of these indictments, with every one of these accusations, with this Colorado thing where they try to take him off the ballot, uh, with every one of those, man, I think his his he he just wins by more. Yeah, I, I, I just do. I mean, there's too many people that are like on the fence. That I mean, maybe they don't like really. Maybe they're independent or whatever, or they're a super moderate. But like when you start attacking our democracy in that, fa- in that, you know, that way where you're trying to like remove your opponent from being able to compete against you. Like that's just, that's some banana Republic third world country bullshit. And even the, even the moderate people, you know, can see that, you, you know, who does that shit, you know, you know, who removes their fucking people from the ballot, Putin. Mm, yeah. Putin. Putin's the, doing it right now. The one, he's in the middle of an election where he's doing exactly what these people are doing right now in Russia. As they as as Biden tries to call Trump Putin, he does what Putin does. Yeah. And tries to, you know, yeah. remove his opponent this, from this competing. Is, this is their last, this is their Alamo. This removing from the ballot stuff is is their Alamo. And um man, who knows? Who knows what this goes? It's it's not constitutional. They're putting some kind of spin on it. For, which is like a part of the 14th Amendment, which was basically created to not let people who led insurrection or insurrectionists into office. Mm-hmm. And these people from the Confederacy were convicted of being insurrectionists. Right. And that was the whole point of doing that. The flip side here is Trump has not been convicted of being an insurrectionist. Hasn't been charged. Hasn't been, has not been formally charged. It's not even anything to do with any of his legal battles right now. Nobody is trying, nobody over out there is trying to prove he was an insurrectionist. You know, that matters, like the legal people, lawyers, anything like Mm -hmm. that. No one is even going after him for that. No. That's not even part of his legal battles. Now, do you know the one charge that's going to stick that may stick to him is going to be that obstruction charge from Miralago? That's going to be the only charge that's going to, and I don't, honestly, it's, that's a stretch. Mm. Out of all the stuff that they have trumped up against him, the um, the, the best shot they have is an obstruction charge. It's crazy. That, that's the best that they've got. All of these presidents have classified documents. Do you know why they all have classified documents? Because when they leave the presidential office, they are moved to where the future home of their library is going to be. Trump had pr- documents that were not classified at the time at one time they were classified because people don't understand that like when a president is going over to iraq to see the troops like he did on thanksgiving Mm -hmm, day mm -hmm. all of that stuff was classified until it happened Mm -hmm. 
You know, if you have a phone call with a foreign leader, it's classified until it happens. Yeah. All of those documents were moved down there by the federal government. Like, yeah. shut the hell up, man. It's crazy. And these people, they just don't get it. Guess what? Biden's got Biden's got stuff. Mm. Obama's got classified documents at Obama's house. When the Reagan's left office, all that stuff was moved to California to open up the Reagan National Library. The mm. Clintons, all that stuff was moved to Arkansas to open up the Clinton National Library. It all It's the same process. I'm less concerned about the not important no longer classified documents that any president has at their homes than I am the historical items and artifacts that Hillary Clinton stole out of the president, out of the white house oh, when she left. There's you know that. What I mean? There's that. But that stuff, nobody cares about that. Right. Like she yeah. just literally stole stuff out of the white house. Well, I mean, and let's, let's be honest. I mean, Bill got a blow on the resolute desk. I mean, mm. there's that. That whole thing disgusts me. There's that. <laughs> How many people knew that was going on? That certainly wasn't. Did a you see that whole thing that came out like just recently? Because I, I just heard about it where um, Bill told a friend or somebody like while she was running that like she had no chance and that her um, her campaign like um, her, her campaign basically had no chance because it was just horribly run. Mm. And he like told a friend that and ended up in some book really yeah like while she was running he was basically saying she's got no shot they're like the people working this for her have no clue yeah and i i'm it's just that's wild it's wild and it's funny just because i imagine there's not that much communication between those two hillary and bill oh oh you're saying that about hillary's campaign yes oh shit bill was telling a friend yeah, of his you weren't clear about that yeah yeah bill okay. was telling a friend of his while he was while she was running while hillary was running against trump uh, was basically telling a friend of his that she's got no shot to win like it's just so poorly managed and her campaign basically sucks is what he was saying oh uh, and then that all came out after the fact but you know i mean it's not the first time he betrayed her so man. whatever she deserves every bit of it dude. she's a disgusting vile creature yeah. she is so but yeah i i think what they're doing now, i mean michigan so not only colorado this is what people don't understand the headline read you know trump you know court you know removes trump from colorado ballot that's what the headline what the small print said what was also in that judgment is that people could that write in votes for donald trump would not be accepted right now that's some bullshit well that's, that, that's that's an I mean, attack on the system well that was i mean you can't i understand how that works like if you're if there's someone who can't run for a legitimate legal reason yeah right well then you can't just have them be a write-in because then that's just that's basically not taking them off the ballot uh, man it is taking but them to off take someone off the ballot who's been committed or has been convicted of nothing let alone accused of nothing yeah or at least what you're saying he's doing to to justify taking him off the ballot yeah and he's nowhere been accused of that or convicted of that is like crazy but i mean that kind of already got shot down you know you know how you know we're always figuring out you know when we, when we leave new jersey like where we're going just wreck colorado right off the list yeah well that was <laughs> never even on my list nope that was, that was nowhere near my we're list we're done you you and me are done, Colorado. No, and <laughs> mountain lions and whatever else they got there. Bears and bears, cold mountain, weather. Mountain lions and skiing. bears. Oh my. Um, but Michigan, Michigan just ruled again that, you know, he could be on the ballot. So um yeah. I, I think um I, I think he'll get in. Uh I, I just if he doesn't get in, there needs to be some kind of uproar. I'm not I'm not uh, vowing for an insurrection or anything, but there needs to be there needs to be some kind of an uproar. The other question is is does it end up being Biden on the ballot against him? I don't think so. So you think in this short period of time something's going to happen? Yes. That has someone else running as the Democrat. Yes. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that's what the Democrats want, but I just don't know how they make that happen. Are they going to run Gavin Newsom? How I think is part whether well, how can they they, they I'm, but that those aren't words. <laughs> I did, I, 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 how do they do a lot of shit they do? You know, I mean, there's there's not many so, rules. But then there. what what becomes their excuse for not 
the party does Having not the incumbent. The party does not have to support the incumbent. Yeah, but when does that happen? It well, it hasn't happened, but the incumbent has also not been walking mm-hmm. around, you know, like a like a a, a, a freaking zombie. So then, what happens? What do you think happens to that party? And how does that fraction when or fracture when um they don't have Biden run, but they don't have Kamala as the one? I don't know. I don't think I don't think she's in their playbook at all. I think that she Yeah, but what do you think that does to the party? Because there's a lot of minority women in that party that I feel like are gonna there's, there's, lose their minds if that happens. Uh, I don't I don't know what that does. I, I don't know. I, you got I the whole squad. How do you think they're going to feel about that? Well, F what the kind squad. Of, but, but what kind, I but understand I think, that. But I'm just saying. I think the hardcore, turmoil within that party. Hardcore female liberals are never going to are never going to vote Republican. Okay. They're, yeah. they're, they're, they're not a win. They're not a target audience. They're 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 never going to vote Republican. Hard, hardcore, hardcore female liberals are never going to vote Republican. Yeah, but that has nothing to do with what I'm saying, though. They would vote for Kamala, though. They would, but uh, I'm but, just saying. But I'm saying from the party standpoint, it doesn't matter. Like that, that 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 core. I feel like that even if, if that core base loses their mind, the party. I don't think the party cares if they lose their mind because they're not going to lose that vote. They're not. They're not. There's. They're not going to lose that vote. No, probably not. You know, I got 15 people that are still on my Facebook feed that I could tell you, they they could run literally anybody, and they would they would not yeah. swap a vote. I, I, I get that. I'm and, not saying it would cost them. I'm not saying that it would affect necessarily the outcome of the election. I'm just saying what it does to the, the internal structure of that. Does it split party? The party? I don't know. They you all know? stick they liberals stick together. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. They do, but I mean I know. I they know. do until they don't. So you know well, what I mean? It's uh the more and more of these of uh, yeah, the more yeah. and more, you know, crazies like the AOCs and stuff that they they have in there. And their squad and all of them, like hmm. he's not fit. He's yeah. not. He's not fit to be a president. Well, he wasn't he, fit when he was elected. He's last had. Time. He's had twelve press conferences mm. in his last year in office. Trump had thirty-five. It's crazy how they've just refused to put him in front of the American people that they supposedly voted for him. And they can't, you know, this and is not let him speak ever. Like the, it's crazy. It's crazy, and this country is not at a point where the the, the basement. The basement's not going to work this time. They're not going to be able to lock this dude in the basement and, and run run a campaign for him while he, you know, know. he sits in a basement playing with Hunter's laptop. Some it's, conspiracy it's theorists not, will tell you that's not even the same Joe Biden that was in. in, in yeah, uh, that's a stretch. So, I don't know, man. I'm still. Well, I I know. Listen, I'm not into conspiracy like crazy hardcore stuff like that. But I still, I'm still really puzzled by the earlobe thing. Well, I will say this. He's not the same Joe Biden that he was earlier in his career. Yeah, I don't mean it like that. You know, I don't mean he's changed. No, I mean, no, you mean how, how do you, how do your ears change? You mean there's some men in black shit going on? <laughs> I don't know, man. The earlobe thing is is bizarre to me. I don't know. Does he have a body double? I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of them have, but I think they use Biden's body double more often. That's a, that's a that's a theory. It's, that's a theory in itself. Somebody did something to uh, Fetterman, and I like the new one better. The new Fetterman. He came yeah. off those. He came off those meds. They he had him off. He <laughs> he came out of that, that that whole medical thing where he was almost dead, and now all of a sudden he's talking like a Republican. Mm. Sometimes they should have left him in his sweatpants, shuffling along. But listen, I'll happened. tell you what. I and I, I found this out um, this weekend or this, the other day, um, like firsthand on a personal level, but. A lot of liberal uh, uh, Jewish people are talking like Republicans these days. Well, I mean, you're talking about the existence of a faith. Mm-hmm. You're talking about the existence of a people, right? Of, actual- of, 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 of a people, right? I mean, I mean, and to them, their faith—they—they they are their faith. I mean, you know, especially, you know, a, a lot of them. I think it, it. I think faith means more to the average. Um, person of jewish descent than it does to the average person of catholic and maybe even the average christian you know it's i don't i don't feel like i don't feel like at any point we've been fighting for the existence of christianity in in the history of the world we have been fighting to advance christianity there's been a lot of that but 
we haven't been in a, in a, in a, in a fight for the existence of Christianity with people who just want to destroy us. And I feel like, I feel like that's mm, what they're in. I don't know about that. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's countries where Christianity is illegal. Well, again, but the, Totally agree. You're, you're looking at it from a U.S. perspective, to, but to, I'm, I'm looking at it as a grand historical. Perspective. Christianity has never been in a in a point to be to not have a home to be completely wiped off the face of the earth. I don't think Christianity has ever been in a point where you know we don't we don't have there's there's no place for Christians in this world. And I, I kind of feel like, and maybe I'm not articulating that in the right way. But I feel like, you know, the Jews, you know, even, even since World War II, I mean, that's the, the whole point of Israel is that there was no home. There was no place for them, you know. Yeah. And um, I don't know. The whole thing is uh, is very puzzling to me, the whole the whole Jewish thing. And just I don't know why it's taken them so long to come around to realize that Republicans don't hate them and the Republicans aren't the anti-Semitic ones. Like, I don't know why they've been so slow to learn that. Yeah. And all, you know, and this, this recent thing, and it's what's going on daily now with this whole pro Hamas, pro Palestine stuff in the mm-hmm. U.S. I mean, obviously it's shocking to them and, and really changing the way they think, but mm-hmm. I'm just surprised it's taken them that long. This is the pendulum, right? Yeah. It's the pendulum. We talk about the pendulum so much, you know, especially when it comes to politics and beliefs and, you know, how the pendulum, you know, with so many issues politically in this country has swung so far in one direction that you know you you have this this reaction to where people who are middle of the road moderates are like whoa 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 and i think probably is most of most of the jewish people i know historically have been liberals yeah but they've been middle of the road liberals right and the ones that i do know are conservative are nowhere near middle of the road conservatives um, the few that I know, and I don't, I honestly, I don't know many, many Jewish people who are conservative historically, but the ones that I do know who are liberal, a lot of them, except for a handful, are mostly middle of the road moderates. And, John, I don't really know what that means. Uh, you can be, you can call yourself middle of the road all you want, but if you continue year after year after year after election cycle after election cycle to vote for a liberal uh, Democrat party who's clearly not middle of the road and you continue to i mean you're i think it's that whole you know i think i'm a moderate but like you're you're basically condoning and you're helping what's not moderate middle of the road so you're kind of just as guilty like it's that fence-sitting bullshit that i don't like i feel i feel like a middle of the road voter when it comes to a general election can go either way i think they are the swing vote yeah well i don't think that many of them go either way i think most of the most yeah well i mean jewish people have, have voted that's a, that's for the Democrats. That's an opinion. I mean, it's not opinion. It's a fact. Mm, I have to pull the numbers. I, I mean, pull I'm, the I'm numbers. Sure, I mean, I'm sure they're out there. I've heard now since this has become a thing since the October thing. Like I've heard so many interviews, and every popular um, Jewish person that's in the news and in that kind of media what? says like they they have no answer for why, but their people vote Democrat year in and year out. Mm. Their parents vote Democrat year in the older the older Jews vote Democrat. And they don't really know why, and none of them can explain it. But that's just what they do. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I'd have I don't to, think it's even close. I'd love to know. I'd love to know what it is. I don't think it's even close. And well, I think this year that's going to change. But that's what happens when you threaten to try to wipe a whole group of people off the planet, and you have people that we've allowed into our country protesting basically for that wiping off jews off the face of the planet and you have our government not doing anything to stop it and like what what do you what what are jewish people supposed to do at this point well you have our government it's not doing anything to stop anything right now it's the most bizarre thing because historically like even with egypt when they went in there and just kicked the shit out of egypt you know it was the u.s government that said all right let's let's you, you proved your point let's pump the brakes right whether you agree with it or not it was the u.s government who, who kind of mm-hmm. who toned that down and now we're not supporting them, but we're not, we're not, we're, we are the ones, the U S abstained from the vote. Right. So for support for Gaza, the U S mm-hmm. abstained for the vote, mm-hmm. um, Russia abstained and we abstained. Um, oddly enough, I don't, I don't know what the, the meaning behind Russia abstaining was, but regardless, the two countries that abstained from the vote in the UN, 
um, for, you know, um, you know, for relief, you know, support for Gaza. Um, so we're not saying, you know, stop attacking, but we're not helping them really in any way, shape or form. You know, yeah, I don't know, man. It's we are putting our troops in harm's way. It's so hard to figure out what we're doing when you have leadership and government that doesn't know what they're doing and won't tell you what they're doing and won't doesn't explain what's going on and doesn't communicate and doesn't have press conferences. And if they do, it's that clown chick, whatever she is, just telling lies in her little press conferences. Nobody wants to hear from her. I don't understand. When did this become a thing where, I mean, they the president does isn't isn't required or responsible to come address the people and we just have this clown fill in and speak on his behalf day in and day out and we never get to hear from the president when did that start happening because that didn't used to happen back in the day well i think we i i don't know at what point they started these press conferences but obviously they've been going on for a long time um you know to convey to convey stuff to the press and honestly i don't know how long i think they've been going on longer than they've been televised i feel like but uh, you know, if, but I think that's because there's like the, there's always been like the need by the media for like daily reports. Yeah, right. Fine, I understand that. Right, I don't expect the president to come out and address the media every day. But like we've now gone to the point where it's like, oh no, 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 you can't talk to the man behind the curtain. You have to talk well, to that's the point. her over here. She'll let you know what he's thinking. Again, the right? pendulum's gone so, so it's far like, the other way. So I mean, like, yes, they've always had a press secretary. Yes, they've always had someone who did these daily things, but it wasn't that wasn't our only way of hearing from the, the president. You know what I mean? Correct. And it's I mean, one just, of those things that like we as a society don't pay attention to. And they just kind of start doing it and we don't really even notice and don't fight back on it, push back. And then mm -hmm. it's just, it's just now that's how it is. And he is, and you just have to accept it. He's not going to be any only press conferences he does take are from prescripted people asking oh. prescripted questions. I mean, we know that and we, he can't even get those right. We've any, right. He doesn't what a get disaster. Right. And we've seen the flashcards. We've seen, we've seen, we've seen everything. It's not like it's some, it's some secret at this point, but I don't know who uh, it was that called him a Roomba, but that was the funniest thing. That was, uh, I forget what comedian that was. That was funny. Oh, that was so funny. It's so true, though. He wraps up talking, and then he turns around, and he goes into Roomba mode, and he's like, he just he starts to shuffle over he, here. He doesn't shuffle know over there. Go. Shuffle over here. He's so pathetic. It's it's not good. So and that's why that's why I think he doesn't run. That's why I think he is, uh, they're just going to embarrass him. They're going to they're gonna discard him. They're going to throw him aside. Um, and oh, no. and they're going to they're gonna put Gavin Newsom in the White House or try to. I don't know, man. I feel, I feel like uh, if you look at it from the perspective that Biden's not really in charge and other people are making decisions and he's just a puppet, I think that the people in charge like having him there as the puppet. Do you think Gavin Newsom is not a puppet? He's completely on the string. I don't know. He's completely on the string. Well, you know what he said though he, he i mean i still think he mm. maybe thinks for himself he freaking came out and said that he's not okay with taking trump off the ballot in, in in california yeah why should he need to why should that even matter i mean it depends I on mean, how you I, look I mean, at it i mean yeah know? it's it's i guess it's a noble thing for him to say but it's not like it not like it, it's like mm. murphy coming out and saying oh that's good leave trump on the ballot in new jersey it's not one of those like, things though literally man. it's he's never going to win the state He's never getting those electronic I think, votes. I think he's got a better chance of winning friggin' California than New Jersey. No way. There's a lot of Republicans. and They suffer from the same problem as us. There's a lot of Republicans in California. A lot. There are. But you got those, those handful of big cities that just negate that because they ship in all these foreigners and they become liberal voters. Yeah. It's, yeah I don't uh, know. I don't know. I think, I think someone like I definitely, I, I personally believe someone like Biden is 100% more easy to just control and manipulate because all he really wants at this stage of his life is to be thought of as being the president and being in control. Like he's he's about done with his days here, right? Yeah. And he just wants to go out on top being the president. You know, I don't know. I feel like somebody like uh, Newsom's got bigger aspirations. Or, and or, or do they bounce Kamala? off the ballot put newsom in as vice president and then would that be precedent and, and then and then enact i i, I don't know what the, have we ever been in a situation where the sitting president has not been fit to run for office again 
Well, it depends on who you ask. They said Trump wasn't fit. So they, they are, they argued that I mean, and we, know, and they and, argued that Nancy Reagan ran the last two years of the Reagan administration that's crazy. too. So that's crazy. But, um, yeah, but here, listen, this is how on the string this guy is. And I wanted to pull this up because I wanted to get this right. Newsom is the second cousin of musician, Joanna Newsom. Um, Newsom's aunt was married to Ron Pelosi, the brother-in-law of the speaker of the United States of the house of representatives, Nancy Pelosi. Was well, she not the speaker anymore? Yeah. Yeah, related. I know that, but but that's the entire Democrat Party. Related. Every yeah. single person in the Democrat Party is related to either someone else in the party or someone else running a giant corporation somewhere. They, 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 they're all related. They think he's their next Obama. I'm telling you, they're gonna they're gonna run this guy. Well, he can't be their next Obama because they still have Obama. <laughs> True story. <laughs> seriously yeah like know. he can't be there next to obama because obama's still involved and still more involved pulling, than he be. pulling strings so that's that's kind of what i mean by that like for obama does he want this young guy coming in here who might make waves and not do what he's told or do they just want to run with the skin suit mm -hmm. that will just keep doing who, whatever he says who else told to do who else could they run I, can't, I don't see them. I don't think they have a lot of options. And I think they, unless they, something they really could, extreme happens, I still see it being, they, they I still could, see it being Biden. They could run Michelle Obama. Yeah, I don't see that happening. Dude. Holy shit, huh? They could try that, but. They could run Michelle Obama for vice president. I think she has less of a chance than Hillary had. Mm. Mm. I think. Because anyway. you'll, you'll see. Now, I think, I think the, now, way, the you, way 2020 listen, went, they all have a chance. It was, it was hard <laughs> enough. It was hard enough for these old, rich Democrats, which I know we all love to talk about how, you know, the Republican mm -hmm. Party is just a party of old, rich white men. But these old, rich white men, Democrats, it was hard enough for them to vote for a woman in Hillary Clinton. And they did a lot of them. But you know what? It's even harder for them to do. Vote for a African-American woman. Yeah. Because we all know how racist they are, this, despite the trying to flip it and make it out to be the other way around. They're extremely racist. They're extremely um, anti-Semitic. All those things that they accuse Republicans of being. I don't see. I don't see. I don't see Michelle having a shot. But hey, I've been wrong before. <laughs> I didn't think Biden had a shot. Honestly, I, so I don't see him. I don't. See, I just. I just. Don't, I, I see. I see. You know. And getting back to 2024 predictions, I see a huge shakeup on on this ballot i i don't i don't think i don't think as it sits now i i don't i don't i don't i don't think they can run him i just don't think they can run him i like a trump uh what's his name vivek 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 what's his name vivek ramashwani vivek yeah v-i-v-e-k right yeah yeah i think him as the uh as the vice would be pretty cool as the vp i don't know how those guys are and if they would ever do something like that but I'll tell you what, no one out on the trail actually running has backed Trump as much as he has. Well, listen, Vivek's a smart dude, man. He knows how to separate himself from the crowd. And the Chris Christie's of the world. He know right. He he knows he he did not get places in life by by being the um by being the status quo. And he knows how to do two things. He knows how to separate himself from the crowd. And he knows how to put his opponents on defense. And he did that in Colorado where he was like, if Trump is not allowed to run, I will withdraw my name from the ballot. And I challenge, mm -hmm. he said, I challenge my opponents like, to do the same thing. Right. So that is, I mean, that's, yeah. yo, brilliant. Yeah. Fucking brilliant. I think he's man. smart. And listen, it, you know, it's politics. Yeah. They can all just be saying what they think they need to say. To, I mean, to win I, I do think he's a dirty businessman but i think they all are so yeah i don't know i don't know anything about him as far as his his business all i know is the topics he's discussed on different platforms that i've heard him on and i've never there's not been really anything he said that i didn't agree with yeah so but again it's freaking politics man and that's why i like trump because with all his skeletons in his closet, he's relatable. He's not a he's not a politician. He's not a politician. Yeah, I don't he doesn't know. think like a politician. Yeah, it's I and mean, I think that's part of why he you know he struggled and he had so many people against him. But you, I mean, you can't argue if he was a, if he was a typical politician to go along to get along, they would not be doing everything they're doing 
to try to not even allow him to run because that's how scared of him they are. Yeah, they got no stops left after this ballot. They're so afraid of him. After the ballot shit, they've got no more rabbits in the hat. I mean, there's only the only the only thing left to do is assassinate the guy. I, I mean, I mean, literally, that's the only that's the only other way to keep him out of office. I mean, Listen, and you know, don't, don't don't speak that to fruition because that they're they're that unhinged that you know mm, that's the kind of stuff that they would do. A hundred percent. Um. Yeah, man. But you know. That that being said, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind see uh, my, my 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 ticket would be Trump and Candace, but Candace isn't ready. Yeah, no, she's young. I would I would take a Trump Candace Owens ticket. Look, I like Candace Owens. Yeah. Um, she's also young though. But I mean, she just had a baby. Like she did. Do you really want to be oh, going yeah. on the campaign trail with a one year old at home? Mm, JFK did. Yeah, JFK wasn't the mom. Mm hmm. Not true. Huge factor, different era. <laughs> he had a, you know, he, the wife was there to handle that stuff. Yeah, I mean, true. true. That's big. That's a big difference, and that's a whole. You can't. I mean, that's that's apples and oranges. Ah. That's such a different era. Ah, so tough, so tough. But uh, no, I, I do. I like, mm-hmm. I like her. There's a lot of people I like that. I've, I hopefully, you know, in the coming, as we move along, there's a lot of young people out there that I do like that are like kind of like do, in, like her that are like in the party. You know, in the party, I even know, like what's his face. Waves. I didn't like him initially, but I, I have I have come to like him too. Who is the? He's a podcast. The kid who does all the react videos. Oh, what is it? Yeah, conservative. Yeah. Um. Oh my God! I is he an actual politician? Ah, uh, and he's he's Jewish too. Oh, um, Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro. Yeah, I don't know if he like. I know. I know. It's hard. To, I know, those are like about political pun- Like those are those political pundit analyst people but you don't know if they really have any desire to be the president right right. no idea he's smart Um, as can be i mean reagan was a hollywood actor and trump was a real estate mogul yeah so yeah i understand what they they, they are now is uh you know yeah well i mean minnesota voted mm -hmm. for jesse the body and true story california voted for a bodybuilder action star so i mean story that's that's not really mm-hmm. the point. Just I about, just don't know. Like, yeah, would he make a, a great president? Maybe. Who knows? Um, but again, like, is that even on his how list about Trump, of aspirations? Trump, how about Trump and Chrissy Noem? I, you listen, I love Chrissy Noem. <laughs> He's like, well, listen. <laughs> I love Chrissy Noem. I mean, one of the few states that you know or, that remained free and open during that whole disa- mm-hmm. debacle of COVID. So they have freedom in South Dakota. She's never said anything I didn't like or agree with. Um, she, I think, is a, you know, true old-fashioned, you know, conservative American who believes in freedom and government, staying as small and out of people's business as possible. So I can always get behind that. Yeah. Um, but you know how that goes, man. Someone like her <laughs> runs, you know, she throws her hat in the ring, and now you know here comes the left with all their, you know, assassination, you know, character assassination stuff. And, yeah. You know, there's some there. You know, like they did with what's her face from Alaska. Yeah, you know, they made her out to be a fool, and and she's again not a, not a dumb woman, but uh, it just goes to show you how sad, like people are and the stuff that they believe. You know, uh, uh, Saturday Night Live does a skit and makes up some stuff and does a skit, and then half the country really believes that she said that what was said on the skit. Oh yeah, you know what I mean? Like yeah. They really actually believe that, like, she was dumb and said this, yeah, just because Saturday Night Live like made fun of her and and pretended became, she said that. It became the tagline of a whole campaign. It's like, are you kidding? Like, that's how dumb we are. As humans, yeah. man, it's crazy. It's scary. I don't know. I think he wins. Um, and I think the harder over the next couple months that the left presses and does everything they can to not allow him to run and to continue to try to, you know destroy you know him as a whole like i just think the stronger he gets with every freaking indictment i think his numbers got better and better like he's just yeah i mean and you got you're at the point now where you know liberal polls have him way ahead yeah i I mean the ones that normally skew crap america loves an underdog i think that's the thing that they've they failed to calculate and um you know we, we we love an underdog and they have they have made him they have made, they've they've just tried to portray him as an underdog you know i think america doesn't america doesn't like people being treated 
unfairly and unjustly and attacked for things. Oh, true. That, you know what I mean? True. Like, and that goes hand in hand with the underdog yeah, thing. But true. like, it just, you know, you can only watch somebody get beat on for so long before you, you know, come to their defense. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's crazy. It's like the media said that he had nuclear codes in Mar-a-Lago and he, he didn't. It's, no, it, it's just, it's just, yeah, well, it's like they just needed to enhance. They the said story. Israel blew up a, 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 a hospital too, right? They said that like they, immediately. They, like they, the media did say Israel, media just, Israel missile to hospital. Just, also did not happen. Yeah, we wouldn't have half the problems mm-hmm. we have in the world right now if, if like we didn't have media, or, or if They're we, the devil, or dude. if we had media didn't have an agenda. Well, yeah, you know, the, the olden days where they just mm-hmm. reported the local news or I mean, what if we, happened. If we had media, so, so speaking of media and world news, um, now that we've talked election 2024, which I am sure we will be talking more of in 2024 as, oh, yeah. as the time gets close. Um, we, got, we got Trump coming on? Mm-hmm, we might. On mm-hmm. podcast? Oh, yeah, maybe. I could try. <laughs> I would love that. I don't even know what I would say. <laughs> I don't even know what I would say. I would definitely sit there in the chair with the Trump power move, though. Mm-hmm. I would definitely be first to the ring with that. And then when he did it, I would probably just sit back in my chair and be done. <laughs> yeah. But um, uh, a world stage, man, I, I feel like, um, and you know, it's funny, my mom and I, we were watching the news the other night and she says, you know, the, the world in, in my entire life, I've never seen what we have going on now. Even, even before Vietnam, it wasn't like this. Um, and as far as as far as like what we're seeing take place between these countries and this conflict and, and you're, mm. you're looking at somebody who's you know 78 years old who's you know doesn't obviously remember world war ii but has been through you know the vietnam lost friends from high school you know her, her age group was the vietnam you know draft age um and uh you know through korea you know through all that and has never seen like what we're going through now. And I, I think the last time there was this much conflict was, was before World War II. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you can argue, I mean, what kicked off World War II was the invasion of Poland. I mean, it was like, you know, they invaded Poland and it was like, oh, and then they invaded France and the world was like, oh shit, we have a problem. So it's, um, I, I feel like, I feel like we're, we're not going to get through 24 w- without, some serious semblance of whatever world war three is going to be because i kind of feel like we're already in it yeah so i was going to ask you like if you thought Mm -hmm. we got through 24 um without actually having bodies involved in this conflict we're definitely going to have bodies involved before the end of 24 you think there's no way i i don't i i don't see and i'm in Bodies involved and boots in the ground are two different things, right? I mean, we, we, we all know the consequence right now, our generation of, of like literal boots on the ground. And in, in theory, I think that that whole segue into that is going to be very different because we have boots on the ground in Iraq right now that are surrounded. The, the Iraqis aren't happy about it anymore, right? Yeah. They, they don't, they don't want us there. They just, they, they just condemned our, you know, our response to, you know, them firing drones at us. They, we attacked the drone factory in Iraq and Iraq was like, yo, we don't want you to do that. Like, are you fucking kidding me right now? So Iran is setting up stuff in Iraq. Iran and Iraq have mm-hmm. come a long way in their relationship. All right. To unite against the West. That is going to be very, very different. Um, I feel like Iran has a very sneaky way of doing things mm-hmm. to um, not be directly involved, but you know, be so indirectly involved they are involved i mean they are funding you know they're they are funding this houthi group in yemen we, we know that you, iran helped organize and fund the hamas attack into israel no better kickoff to a world conflict than have us be balls deep into supporting ukraine and financially and weapons to ukraine than to start this bullshit now yeah you know what I mean? There, there is no, the timing for them could not and will not be better. So this is going to get much worse before it gets better. I think the question is how fast does it get worse? I'm kind of surprised that it was not worse over the Christmas holiday. I really expected more shit to happen over and Christmas holiday isn't over yet. So I expected more stuff to go down before then, but you know, I mean, we live near a military base. I had, 
six or seven planes fly over this house today. Never happens. I'm not in a, I'm not in a normal flight path. So, hmm. you know, when you live near a military, military base, you always hear the uptick. Yeah. Um, if you're in country lakes, like right now on the other side, that's closer to the air force base, constant traffic. Yeah. Constant traffic. So it, it's like, you know, you know, the uptick is taking place. You yeah, can, you can feel it. There's no way there. There's just no way. I mean, yeah. I don't know, man. It's going to be, it's going to be a crazy. It's always a crazy year when it's an election year, you know, this China is going to take Taiwan <clears throat> before, before this election. There's so much crap going on, man. It's, China, he sat down and told Biden, I'm going to take Taiwan just at this last world summit. Yeah. He told Biden, we're, we're going to take Taiwan. I don't know what, what Nimrod's response was, but mm -hmm. what are we like? Probably told him he liked ice cream. He probably did. <laughs> I like, I ice like cream. ice cream. <laughs> I got to get that sound bite too. We're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to, we're going to raise the bar here going into 2024 on the uh, American ride podcast. Yeah. But, um, I don't know, man. Yeah. It's, there's yeah. a, there's a lot going on. There's so many moving pieces, you know, and and the U.S. is going to be so caught up in you know this the 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 political campaign, you know, the 2024 election campaign oh, cycle. The, um, you know, the planets are getting aligned. Man. Everybody's going to be you know caught up in that. Like, yeah, I mean, not that Biden's running anything now, but he certainly, if he continues to be on the ticket and is running, like he's not going to be running anything. Like he's going to be worrying about getting reelected. It's just, I mean, that or they're just, you know, creating all their ballots to stuff the box. I don't know. The the only thing <sighs> it's it's the, the mail in ballot thing is just mind boggling to me. Um I struggle with that. The only thing that I hope here is that um if we have to send, you know, if we have to send Americans, you know, into into fight and you know, I, I hope that we don't, you know, have to send another you know, have go happen what we have happened in the last, you know, 20 years and wind up in another Afghanistan or another Iraq. I, I really, I pray that that doesn't happen. I don't feel like there's any of those wars left. Those conflicts, those battles. No, I don't feel like any of them that go on over there are ever short and yeah. we don't ever get in and get out. You know, my, my only hope is that we have the leadership that doesn't handcuff these guys. I mean, let our war fighters be war fighters and let these guys go do the job well, that they have to do. I think what you'll find is that if the right, person, the right person gets elected this year coming up, you know, things will change. Yeah. I really believe that. I, th I feel like if he was the president this last four years, none of this would be. I think we all know none of this would be going on. Yeah. No, man, they were all so quiet. None of them had the balls <laughs> to do anything while he was the president, man. <laughs> No, 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 I don't understand why people can't just appreciate that and give them the credit for that. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. they were all quiet. There was peace deals going on in the Middle East that had never happened before. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody was saying boo mm -hmm. until we got this freaking skin suit in there that freaking is afraid of his own shadow and falls downstairs. Like, yep, it was mind boggling. I don't know, man. It's going to be interesting. Uh, it's it's really hard to make predictions on things like this. I'm not, you know. I'm not Nostradamus, but, um, it's going to be interesting. It's going to, it's kind of scary. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, I think both sides, both sides of the aisle will agree that this is, you know, and they say this every time around, but this is the biggest election ever, like for the future, you know, every so, election is the biggest election ever. I feel like it, 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 cause it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse and worse spiraling out of uh, control, man. I don't know. So. I don't know, but um, hey, we'll be back for 2024. Hell yeah! The end of season one here on this American Ride podcast, brought to you by Legendary USA. Mm -hmm. um, why be ordinary when you can be legendary? Check out the link in description for uh, Legendary's American-made leather products and uh, EDC gear. So yeah, what? Um, that's it, man. It's the end of end of 23. Yeah, I'm looking forward to 24, man. We got a lot going on. Mm -hmm. We have we have we, got, a, we have a ton going on. We have a ton going on with you know getting mm -hmm. this thing off the ground. You know, still we still got the baggers and brews uh, YouTube channel going on. If you're if you're not following that, go check that out on YouTube. Um, we got a big year of uh, charity fundraising coming up that we've already kicked off, and we're definitely going to talk about that early in January yeah. and uh, really get that rolling. 
but you can find the uh the link in like all our videos all our podcast descriptions for our fundraising page to raise money for the tunnel to towers foundation uh that that whole uh project is going to be going on for the entire year of 2024 so feel mm-hmm. free to click on that link whenever you want as many times as you want and donate to that we have a very lofty goal of fifty thousand dollars that we're trying to raise in 2024 50 k for veterans and first responders who help us out every day yeah and i uh i think i, I i'm i'm pretty confident that we will get there with everybody's support you know um you kind of see People's true patriotism come out when it comes to uh, supporting, supporting the vets, the vets, and the first responders. So, uh, looking forward to twenty twenty four. Looking forward to making a lot of new connections in this whole uh, project of, of of the charity. You mm-hmm. know, fundraising, and we've already met a lot of new people that have already jumped in to help out, and I'm sure we're going to meet more. And uh, excited about that. Excited for the podcast. Excited for the Baggers and Brews channel to keep growing. And uh, and you know whatever else i know we got a lot of things bro and that we haven't even talked about yet but excited for 24 man yeah i can't wait big can't possibilities wait. i can't wait it's coming whether you want it whether you want yeah. it to or not man it's coming no crap it's on the way yeah and we're gonna kick it off new year's eve here at your crib mm-hmm. with some friends have some some friends. food and some drinks and, Turn, and celebrate into, turned into a monty python skit yeah <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> if you know you know <laughs> so it's going to be a good time we're going to hang out here i hope you guys all have an amazing uh new year's eve new year's day um uh, whatever it is that you guys do for your your new year's traditions but uh we have recent years have just gotten together and hung out at somebody's house and yep. socialized and had a good time and i'm looking forward to that and New Year's Day, I do my roast pork and sauerkraut because that is a roast that is a, pork and sauerkraut a tradition. I will be watching some football on New Year's Day this year. There's some okay. good college games on. I'll be hanging out doing that and uh, dreading going back to work on Tuesday. <laughs> oh. Nice. All right. Well, listen, thank you for listening. Subscribe if you've not already subscribed to this American ride on YouTube and listen to it wherever you find your podcasts, sir. And I'm George. This is Bert. Good luck in 2024. Later.